A very stingy man spent the whole night drinking, and at dawn, he was drunk. He was on his way home, and he was walking along the river when he slipped and fell into the water. He was drowning when some men quickly gathered and formed a chain holding hands. The man who was closest to the water called out, Bob, Bob, give me your hand, give me your hand. And the man who was drowning and gasping for air kept saying, I can't, I can't. Luckily for him, his wife showed up at that moment. And his wife said to the man, you don't know my husband. As long as you keep saying, give me, give me, he will not hear. Now let me show you how to do it. And then she went very close to the water and she called out, Bob, take my hand. And all of a sudden, Bob stretched out his hands, held the wife's hand, and both of them were moved out of the water to safety. My dearly beloved in Christ, today we'll celebrate the greatest treasure of the church. We'll celebrate the solemnity of the body, the blood, the soul, and the divinity of Jesus Christ, present under the appearances of bread and wine the most holy sacrament, the most blessed sacrament. Like we shared last Sunday, God does not change. God has no beginning. But God reveals himself to humanity gradually in a historical context. And this is what we call the history of salvation. And we may ask the question, what we celebrate today, the Holy Eucharist, where does it appear in history? At what point can we situate the Holy Eucharist in history? Father Raniero Cantalamesa answers this by saying, that we cannot situate the Holy Eucharist in a particular point in history. That the Holy Eucharist is in the whole of the history of salvation, and the whole of the history of salvation is in the Holy Eucharist. But this is in three different ways, different but related. The first one is in the Old Testament. The Holy Eucharist is in the Old Testament as a figure, as a prefiguration. In the New Testament, the Holy Eucharist is there as an event. And in our own time, the time of the church, the Holy Eucharist is present as a sacrament. The whole Old Testament prepares and prefigures the event, prepares for the event. While in the time of the church, the sacrament prolongs and actualizes the event. In the Old Testament, we have many figures pointing towards the event. For example, the manna that fell down from heaven to feed the Israelites in the course of the Exodus. Isaac, the son of Abraham, who was about to be sacrificed. The Passover, when the Israelites left Egypt on their way to the Promised Land, the night that the firstborn of the Egyptians died. All these and many others 
points to the events. In the New Testament, the Word of God became flesh in Jesus Christ, where we have the real event, where we have the Paschal Mysteries, the Passion, the Death, and the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in our own time, the time of the church, we have the sacrament, the prolongation of the event and the actualization of the event. We were not there when Jesus established this sacrament, the sacrament of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. So what makes us equal to the apostles who were there is the sacrament. We connect to the event through the sacrament. It is like what the television does for us. We may not be at the station, at the television station where the signals are sent out. But through our television, wherever we may be, we connect to what is happening in the station. So through the sacrament, we connect to the event in the New Testament. Today we celebrate the Holy Eucharist. And when we celebrate the Holy Eucharist, one name we give to the celebration is the Mass, which comes from the Latin Misa, which reminds us of the word mission, to be sent. And so what happens at Mass? We receive from God. When we gather at Mass, Jesus says to us, take and eat, take and drink. But the story does not end there. At the end of the Mass, we are missioned out. And that is why the Mass is called Misa. We are sent out to share with the world what we have taken, what Jesus has given to us, to go and share with others. Jesus feeds us with his body and his blood at Mass. And at the end of the Mass, the deacon or the priest tells us, Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Go and feed others as you have been fed. At Mass, Jesus washes our feet, that at the end of the Mass, we may go and wash the feet of others. At Mass, Jesus gives us the good news that we may go out at the end of the Mass to become good news for others. And so, my dearly beloved in Christ, if we have been able to hear Jesus say, take at Mass, we also must be open to hearing Jesus say, give at the end of Mass. And as we do that, we will be empowered by the body and blood of Jesus Christ. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.